This is fresh raw sugar cane juice, straight from the, the mill where the cane has been crushed. Keith Laurie is a retired sugar technologist, and he's going to show me how to transform cane juice into a product with an almost indefinite shelf life. Once it goes into this pan, it will cool rapidly and theoretically it will crystallize. The cooling and Keith's stirring helps the syrup to solidify quickly. Oh, yeah. Well, that's the theory anyway. Come on, thing. Right, it is crystallizing. It is crystallizing. What does it actually mean when it's crystallizing? I mean, apart from it's going hard, what is actually the process? Or is that just the process? It's very, very fine crystals that are growing rapidly. Creating sugar is not as easy as it looks, and despite being an expert, Keith is not happy with the way things are going. Come on, thing. I would prefer it if it had gone absolutely solid. It's on its way, isn't it? And you can see that there's some bits here which are really quite... What do you think? Nah. <laughs> This is supposed to go to a powder. Right, it's still a little sticky, but I can see what you mean. This is the process. Yeah. But I think this is, we could call this a semi-triumph. Absolutely. Yes, let us call this a semi-triumph. This is a semi-triumph. Look. Sugar. Absolutely. Sugar. Yes, crystal sugar. sugar. Wow. -y. Keith showed me some of the industrial-scaled kitchens that were built to meet the growing demand for crystallized sugar. Here, the cane juice was boiled and reduced to a syrup and then shaken into crystals. This was the Eureka moment. Their gem-like precious product was now brown sugar. Of course, none of this could have been achieved without a plentiful supply of labor. Although some of the first indentured servants had been white Scots and Irishmen, they were soon replaced by a cheaper option. The cane came to be planted and cut and the cauldrons of boiling syrup sweated over by an army of black slaves from Africa's west coast. And there it was, the birth of an industry which made the mass production of sugar possible. Windmills like this one were built using technology from halfway around the world, enabling the farmers to crush the cane faster and in greater volumes. Greater volume meant cheaper prices. Sugar had become a commodity, available for the first time on the tables of at least some, if not all, British households. It was our first taste of things to come. Slaves from Africa, technology from Holland, cranks and shafts from Derby, further cranks from Glasgow. And who says that globalization's a new thing? Seems to be as old as this island. <laughs> all this effort, it's unbelievable, all this effort for a cup of tea, some sugar in your tea. <laughs> 